again and welcome to YouTube lecture number 22, Victory in the Pacific. Earlier today I uploaded lecture number 21, which was the European campaign. Uh, there is again on Edmodo, there is a video log for this Victory in the Pacific and there's a separate one then for the European campaign. Make sure that you print those out and have those ready for Tuesday. So let's go ahead and get right into this lecture, but before we do that, always remember there's an essential question. This one is, what were the major reasons for using atomic weapons against Japan? Now, I didn't put up here the page numbers, but I do have them here, and I'll just tell you what they are. Uh, page 779 to page 782 in our textbook will give you the answers there. It starts at the uh, subheading the Manhattan Project, because this is what this was known as, the Manhattan Project. And again, that's pages 779 to 782. Well, as we're fully aware by now, December 7th, 1941, Japan bombs Pearl Harbor, thus setting off America's entry into World War II. A few months after that bombing, America got a little bit of a payback with the famous Doolittle Raid. Uh, April 18th, 1942, uh, Captain Doolittle and a squadron of B-25 Mitchells, which are a little smaller than the uh, Super Fortress planes that are used, uh, flew in a very, very low pattern to get in as quick as they could, and they struck at Tokyo. Kind of a payback, if you will, just to let Japan know that uh, if you bomb us, we in turn will bomb you back, basically. Uh, December 8, 1941, the day after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, uh, the Philippine campaign begins. Japan attacks the Philippines. And that battle lasted until May 6th of 1942. Japan eventually invades the Philippine Islands. General Douglas MacArthur is commander of uh, all Allied forces in the Pacific. Uh, he's eventually ordered by Roosevelt to evacuate. Uh, Roosevelt does not want MacArthur to be captured by the Japanese. So he and his family and some other advisors will evacuate the Philippine Islands and head to New Guinea, and Japan eventually takes the Philippine Islands. May 6, 1942, Japan conquers the Philippines. Uh, this is also part of what we talked in class the other day of the Bataan Death March. Here is the Bataan Peninsula along the Philippines, and uh, several thousands of troops were taken captive, U.S. troops, British troops, Australian troops, and the Filipino troops, and they were forced to march from one end of the peninsula to the other, where thousands of them wound up dying because of this. May 8th through the, uh, sorry, May 4th through the 8th, 1942, you have the Battle of the Coral Sea is taking place. As the Philippines is falling, Japan decided to try to invade New Guinea and also use that as an opportunity to invade Australia. And Australian and U.S. naval forces fought here. And uh, basically both sides called it a victory. Japan simply ran out of oil and had to retreat, but they inflicted a little bit more damage on the American fleet than America inflicts on them. Um, June 3rd through the 6th, 1942, the Battle of Midway, perhaps the largest naval battle in history. Japan has decided to invade the island of Midway, and their plans then from there is to again attack then Hawaii again, and then invade Hawaii and take it as a possession, and then hopefully from Midway Island and Hawaii Islands, plan an overall invasion of the coast of America somewhere along California. American code breakers, though, have already intercepted the transmissions between the Japanese fleet and have figured out what Japan is trying to do. So, Japan, so the United States sets an ambush, and this massive naval battle then takes place over these three days. Admiral Chester Nimitz is the American admiral in charge of this attack. In the end, what's very important to remember from this, this crippled the Japanese fleet. Four aircraft carriers will be destroyed and one heavy cruiser. Uh, Japan is never going to be able to recover from that. And from that point on, Japan will not fight an offensive naval battle. They'll have to fight basically a defensive naval battle from this point on. It's also the first time in Japanese history since, well, I should say since 1863, that Japan lost a naval battle. America lost one aircraft carrier, uh, the USS Yorktown, and one destroyer in this battle. One, again, 
the largest naval battle of World War II and perhaps the largest naval battle in history. August 1942, America captures Guadalcanal, and it's from this point on that MacArthur comes up with the strategy known as island hopping. In other words, instead of trying to go from island to island to island to island, there are thousands of islands in the Pacific Ocean. This would take decades, perhaps even a hundred years, to conquer Japan this way. MacArthur got the idea to hop over the larger islands, attack a smaller island with just a limited number of Japanese forces, knock them out, then build airfields on those smaller islands, and then from there launch B-29 super fortresses and their Hellcat fighter planes to attack the larger islands from air. This was a very, very successful strategy used throughout this war. Now I put up here B-29 and then the B-17 flying fortress, so we don't get confused. The B-17s, those are the planes that were used over Europe. The B-29s are the planes that were used in the Pacific. And it's from this point on, the round-the-clock bombing of Japan begins in November of 1944. Also in 1944, October 23rd through 26, the Battle of Lete Gulf. This is the retaking of the Philippines. Two years now, since 1942, Japan has occupied the Philippines. Uh, the Battle of Lete Gulf is where America and its allies now attack Japan, and they knock out their fleet, and they're able to land ground forces, and here's MacArthur, coming ashore, returning as it were, and he famously holds a press conference where he famously says, I have returned. Yeah, pretty obvious, but it, you know, is one of those rallying cries of the war. This is also the first time that Japan will resort to something known as kamikaze plane. Uh, pilots were trained only to take off and crash land into the side of a battleship or a cruiser or an aircraft carrier. This was a last-ditch effort of the Japanese to try and stop the American onslaught. February through March of 1945, the famous Battle of Iwo Jima takes place. And you have the picture here, you see, where the U.S. Marines are raising the flag here at Iwo Jima. 19,000 Japanese casualties. There were a little more than 20,000 Japanese on this island. But if you remember, I told you this in class, the Japanese are willing to fight to the death. Nearly 7,000 American casualties in taking this one island. This is what really got into the mind of the American military that if they were going to fight Japan and actually invade Japan, it would cost millions of lives on both sides. They began to realize this was going to be a hard fought war to take Japan. March 9th through the 10th, 1945. Operation Meeting House, the firebombing of Tokyo. Where the United States Air Force is now dropping incendiary bombs, firebombs over Tokyo. Tokyo was a wooden city. Basically, more civilians will die from the firebombings of Tokyo than died when the atomic bombs are dropped. Uh, this, this inflicted massive casualties. Perhaps close to a million civilians died during this time period in Tokyo. And in June of 1945, the invasion of Okinawa, the largest island to the south of Japan. Japan put everything they had into this battle, trying to stop America from invading Okinawa. They used almost a thousand kamikaze pilots. Uh, the word kamikaze, by the way, means divine win. These were mostly young boys who were trained to love their emperor so much that they were willing to sacrifice their lives. Uh, this did have an effect on the American sailor. It, it did scare the snot out of American sailors, but it, it didn't work. Uh, this is a failed project, obviously, on the part of the Japanese, and more of a waste of human life and uh, resources. Finally, uh, August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb falls over Hiroshima, or Hiroshima, whichever way you like to pronounce it. Three days later, August 9, 1945, a second atomic bomb falls over Nagasaki. Now this is part of your essential question. I want you to look up in the book to see what were the main reasons for this. It's still controversial to this day. On August 10th, Japan began to sue for peace, but they did have one condition. Their one condition was they wanted Emperor Hirohito to not only remain the emperor, but under the Shinto religion, 
Hirohito was considered or regarded as a god, and they wanted to keep that. But America denied them that. Hirohito would be forced to go on national radio and denounce his godship. Uh, on September 2nd, 1945, aboard the USS Missouri, one of the ships that were damaged at the attack of Pearl Harbor, representatives of the Japanese government and the United States government, plus her allies in the Pacific, Japan signs the peace treaty, thereby ending the war in Japan. And VJ Day now happens, the victory over Japan. And here's the famous celebratory photo taken in Times, uh, Times Squares in New York of a sailor randomly grabbing some nurse on the street. And you can see she's not really into it. Her hand gestures here are telling you she was completely taken by surprise. And he's kind of got her in a nice grip there. Um, awkward. But it's a famous photograph to this day. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is the atomic power, uh, Fat Man and Little Boy, the two bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Dr. Robert Oppenheimer was the American scientist in charge of the Manhattan Project. And when the first atomic bomb was detonated, he famously says the quote, I am become death, the shatterer of worlds. That's taken from the Upanishads and the Hindu religion. Uh, releasing all of this energy, it finally began to shock the scientists that were working on it that they have really put into the hands of any military the single most devastating weapon ever created by man to date. Uh, and they will use it. They will use it twice. Thankfully, since then, has not been used. However, this issues in the Cold War era. Once America drops bombs, it's only going to be a matter of time before the Soviet Union, Russia, decides to get their own bombs and a nuclear arms race will begin. And that's where we'll actually pick it up in class on Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Remember, Monday is a holiday. Bye-bye now.